Good evening, I'm John Hart. Derek is off tonight. It began with an unusual briefing at the White House. Special Prosecutor James McKay informing the President's aides that Attorney General Edwin Meese was being investigated for his role in an oil pipeline deal in Iraq. A close friend of Meese had a financial interest in the deal. The Los Angeles Times reported a memo by the friend that suggested a payoff to an Israeli official to make sure Israel would not sabotage the pipeline. Today, the New York Times reported the independent prosecutor told the White House Meese played a sustained and important role in promoting the project. Meese's attorney says no laws were broken. The White House says the president has full confidence in Meese. We have two reports. First, from Robin Lloyd. Meese addressed a conservative youth group this afternoon, but said nothing about the investigation. As he left, reporters were kept at a distance by angry supporters of the attorney general. Even though Meese was avoiding reporters, the president's chief of staff, Howard Baker, was out in public strongly defending the attorney general and squelching any rumors that he might be asked to resign. The president has authorized Marlon Fitzwater to say, and he has said that he continues to have full confidence in his attorney general. But privately, White House officials are concerned about the investigation. Sources have told NBC News that Special Prosecutor James McKay has shown Chief of Staff Baker a 1985 memo addressed to Meese suggesting a scheme to pay off Israeli officials. The memo came from Meese's old friend, Robert Wallach. Wallach reportedly proposed to Meese that Israeli officials be given money as an incentive for Israel not to attack a proposed oil pipeline in Iraq, in which Wallach had financial interests. Meese has denied that he ever approached any Israeli official on this matter and has said that he did not promote the project. While defending Meese, White House officials are staying clear of the detail. I don't have any uh, knowledge whatsoever. Uh, it's a matter before the independent councils, and we'll just have to wait and see uh, how, that's, how that work progresses. But sources confirm a New York Times story today that McKay has told senior White House officials that Meese had a, quote, important and sustained role in pushing the billion-dollar pipeline project. What's at issue is a federal law which makes the attorney general responsible for prosecuting American citizens who try to bribe foreign officials. House Majority Leader Foley was asked if Meese should step aside during the investigation. The, whether the uh, Attorney General continues in office is a matter for him and for the President to decide. Aides say the President is strongly supporting his old friend and is adamant that Meese should not resign. I, I see no reason on earth for the President to take any action unless and until it is made to appear that Mr. Meese has done something wrong. Officials here say they have no indication at this time that McKay intends to indict Meese but they admit that the special prosecutor has not ruled that out. Robin Lloyd, NBC News, at the White House. All right, General. In this latest controversy, Meese finds himself caught up in an international web of big oil, big influence, and big money. In 1983, as the Persian Gulf War grew hotter, Iraq looked for a safer way to get its oil out of the Gulf. A plan was devised for a billion-dollar pipeline that would stretch from Iraqi oil fields through Jordan onto the Red Sea, passing within miles of the Israeli border. The pipeline was to be built by the U.S. firm Bechtel. But before Bechtel or anyone would put money into the project, they wanted assurances from then-Israeli Prime Minister Shimon Peres that Israel would not attack the pipeline. Bechtel hired Bruce Rappaport, a Swiss businessman with strong ties to Perez. Rappaport, in turn, hired San Francisco lawyer E. Robert Wallach, a close friend of Attorney General Meese. And that's where the Meese connection and his troubles begin. It is a 1985 memo from Wallach to Meese that reportedly talks about payoffs to Israelis for protection of the pipeline. But in a Jerusalem newspaper today, Perez denied he was offered a bribe. And in a telephone interview from Switzerland, Bruce Rappaport also denied any bribery attempt. All I can tell you is that I have never, nor would I even dream, I don't think that anybody could dare to propose to Shimon or anybody else like that money in Israel. Meanwhile, Special Prosecutor James McKay is also investigating any possible connection between Rappaport and late CIA Director William Casey, as well as the role played by the National Security Council. Sources say then-National Security Advisor Robert McFarlane is considered a witness, not a target in that probe. U.S. officials say the irony in all this is that by the time any alleged bribes were discussed in 1985, Iraq had already decided to send its pipeline through Turkey instead. 
So Meese finds himself in trouble over a pipeline that was never built. Jim McLeshevsky, NBC News, Washington. Coming up on NBC Nightly News, Martin Fletcher reports on Palestinian rioting near one of Christianity's holiest shrines.